Shall we go ahead and get going? I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Roger Jang. Thank you for coming tonight. Before coming here tonight, I was discussing my talk with my wife, Masha. And she said to me, with these pearly words of wisdom, don't try to be charming, too witty, and too intelligent. Just be yourself. <laughs> so I'm going to try to be myself. Um, I'm honored to share um, this upcoming year. It's really an honor to be, um, first of all, on the Board of Trustees and also to be the Chairman. Our charge is to follow the mission. And that mission is to provide quality, compassionate, accessible health care in a manner that brings value to all. And that's really what's key, bringing value to all and provide health care in a meaningful way. So as a board member and as a chair, what is our responsibilities? It's certainly not to run the day-to-day -day hospital uh, operations. We set strategic goals. This last fall, we met with the NCH um, affiliates. We had a whole day session. We talked about common goals and strategies and, and where are we going to be in a few years. To assure we have sustainable financial performance, uh, members of our committee set, set in each and every meeting on finance, and we look at the financial stability of the operation, and we look to the goals of the future. Quality. Provide quality care. The quality meeting meets on a very regular basis, monthly. Uh, I sat on that committee, and it's a very, very important committee where we visit every quality complaint and we look at what's best for our facility and our patients the most. Our main role is to support Bob and the hospital executive team. And for that, um, we see that as one of our key roles. This is our Board of Trustees Executive Committee. Uh, first level, um, you can read as well as I can, but we also have Bob Nutter and Robin Hulquist, uh, who is going to be the incoming president uh, of the medical staff. As for those that are leaving our board, uh, Ned Brewer served two years. Um, we changed our bylaws a few years ago where we have three terms, a two-year, three-year, and a three-year term, and it allows an opportunity for a board member after spending two years, if he or she feels that they're not, it's not a fit for them, then we basically allow them um, to exit, and Ned has done a wonderful job. What can I say about Bill Bedore? Um, all good. I served with Bill for five of these 10 years. <laughs> Bill has been an instrumental leader in our organization. He's held many leadership roles. He was also part of the NCH initiation where he was involved with the NCH board. And so Bill is gonna be missed. And Dr. John Sada, one of my dear running friends. What can we say about John, Dr. Sada? Here's a compassionate individual who served 34 years. He's unwavering in the decisions he makes. We call him Dr. Bylaws because he knows the bylaws of this hospital inside and out. But he's not going away. He serves on the quality committee. He's on the um, co-chief of surgery, med exec committee, and he's also representing um, NCH um, as it relates to our position with LRH. So he serves on that board. So he's really covering us um, well in that area. Our new members, Mr. Milton Bratz, he served on the board in the last several years. He's been off a couple years. 
when I asked him to join the, the back onto the board, um, I told him he had a lot of fuel in his tank, and he's been instrumental, an individual that I enjoyed working with, um, bright, astute, professional, and rounds out the character of the board. So I believe that Mr. Bratz will do a wonderful job. And Mr. Richard Jessman uh, from Lisbon, New England Wire Technologies. Um, great individual, individual that's gonna help us um, provide some additional leadership, leadership that will help create an organization that really has a, a, a strong will to see medical and healthcare grow. This comprises our complete board. And if you look to some of those board members, they're all a mixed group. All individuals that support the community, all individuals you can be proud of. I would have to say that when uh, Chief Paul Smith came on the board, I had to change my ways because uh, he was sitting there with his gun, his hat. I saw Rod, you're in trouble now. <laughs> But he brings a, a really a, a neat twist to the board because he's, he certainly is on the front lines, and I think being on the front lines will help us bring some character to uh, our board and allow our board to, uh, to uh, uh, do what we have to do. That's it. Jeff Woodard is going to uh, talk to us about finance. First thing, how about those Patriots, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're going to go over some uh, statistics from the 2018 year at, uh, year here at L and H. Uh, and when I'm done, if you have any questions, I'm sure Leslie can answer them. <laughs> um, so as you can see up here, our gross revenue for the year was one million uh, six hundred. Uh, sorry, one hundred sixty-eight million dollars, with a net revenue of eighty-five million. In 2017, our net revenue was eighty-one million. So that was a great improvement. With operating margin of $1.9 million, and in 2017, that was $800,000. So again, a great improvement. Total assets at a million, 106 million, and total patient visits were 132,000, and in 2017, that was 123,000. Total community benefits. So those are, those are the programs that LRH runs for the community. They include uh, things like community health education, birth and parenting programs, patient and family resources, free vaccinations, patient transport, our caravan, emergency care, uh, pharmacy education, charity care. Those are just a few of the programs that LRH runs that really benefit the community. And if you total all those up over the whole year, it comes over, over two and a half million dollars. Staffing-wise here at LH, we have 505 staff, 309 being full-time, 129 part-time, and 67 per diem. So this shows the growth over the last several years, and you can see the blue line uh, shows our gross revenue as that continues to increase, and the, the other line is the net revenue, and that stayed pretty steady. The reason the difference there is about $80 million, the difference between the gross and the net is our contracted services with, with insurance companies like Anthem. Um, obviously we don't get paid for what we bill out with those contracts we have, so you can see the difference in what we actually take in, which makes the hospital finances very difficult, as you can imagine. Patient services, so this shows our our different lines we offer, and inpatient and emergency services have stayed pretty flat. As you can see, those are the bottom two rows over the last several years, with uh, outpatient and clinics being the growth, and you can see the growth in those two departments over the years. So that's where we've seen, particularly this year, and, and outpatient has been the biggest growth for the hospital. This is a pretty dramatic slide, slide right here. Operating margin, you can see where it was and where in 2016 we ended up. Uh, in 2016 it was $104,000. 2017 it went to 800,000. And this last year it's 1.9 million. Now that's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, it's a huge turnaround, but more importantly, 
in 2016 as a board member, our decisions we made were really, really reactive to what was going on. We really couldn't look forward because we were concerned about the finances of the organization, obviously. And now in 2019, it's allowed us to be very proactive in looking at growth with the pharmacy you've seen come on board here, different service lines we offer. So that's significant growth, but more importantly, it's significant for the board to be able to make future plans as opposed to being reactive to the situation we had in 2016. That's significant. So Barry Dunn are our auditors, and uh, every year they come and audit our financials, which is always really impressive. They, they audit several hospitals, all the ones in our affiliation group, and every year when they leave, they have nothing but rave reviews for our financial team and our, and our reporting. Um, it's really comforting as a board member when they compare us to all our peers and in most of these categories, total margin, days of, na of net patient accounts receivable, which is critical, meaning we're collecting the money on time, uh, cash flow to debt, long-term debt to capitalization, all those are critical to a successful operation and as they see every year, we consistently beat all our peers on all those items and that really, as a board member, it's very comforting to, to know that we have a strong financial team, a strong management team, and it allows us to focus on the important things, which is growth and planning for the future, um, and not so worried about the the day-to-day -day operations because we have a really great team here. So. I would say from my perspective, I think I've been on board nine years now, um, we have probably the best group of management we've had here, and I think we're very fortunate to have this team on board, and I think the next several years are gonna be very exciting. I can take any questions. Hi guys, thanks for coming. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I'm Dr. Fitzpatrick. Um, first, I wanna thank my colleagues, the board, administration, and all the LRH staff that have been a huge support to my past two years of president of the medical staff. We've had a lot of uh, accomplishments and a lot of um, wins over the past two years, but none of it could have been possible without, it, without everyone's help. So. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Um, as I step away from this role, um, I think we, we have some accomplishments that we can be happy about, but I also very much look forward to what's uh, on the horizon. So I'd like to just give a, a quick recap on um, what is kind of in the hopper from the medical staff perspective. M many of us around the, the hospital really strive for a, a patient-centric, physician-led, professionally managed culture, which comes from our president. Um, obviously, uh, that's his Bob's mantra that we all hear up and down the hallway, day in and day out, but truly working with him side by side, it's something that we, that we truly strive for, and I think that's made us better clinically, it's made for better collaboration, it's really fostered um, and improved communication, and I think uh, will allow us to focus on common initiatives as we as we grow um, which has been good um, we've been thankful to have expansion of service some service lines and some successful recruitment which Bob will go into some more detail but looking for the future I think it's very important from a medical staff perspective to make sure that the community knows that we hold high high importance to have high quality clinicians here for local care uh, we've entered into an agreement with a um, an innovative targeted recruitment uh, firm to really um, look for that future and always continue to reassess our needs um, because I think it could always be better and I think we have to keep that in our target so we serve the community as best as we can. So that's an exciting uh, um, opportunity that we're going to um, really really learn about and hopefully continue to provide the cream of the crop so you guys are comfortable saying this is your community hospital because that's what we want. Um, from a system standpoint, we strive to still foster uh, North Country healthcare. We've had great community uh, quarterly 
more community so we bring the community providers together um, at one location and that's been um, a great idea to try to uh, help collaboration we we look forward to that continued you know, quarterly meeting and uh, I think continued NCH um, collaboration finally I guess the biggest fab work that's in the works is from a medical staff and provider standpoint is a common electronic medical record uh, that will not only improve your your care but foster communication from from facility we're in the midst of making those decisions but again it's been really emphasized to have great strong provider and physician input because this is what we use day to day so um, those are some of the four um, highlights that I wanted to talk <coughs> talk about that are really on the on the pressing side of, of, um, of what's coming um, I want to introduce dr. Robin Hallquist she's the next um, president of the medical staff she's on staff here at LRH as well as an Amanusik um, she's going to provide great medical leadership and is going to have a new a new level and insight um, to help carry on I think the, tr the tradition of strong medical leadership we've had as for me, uh, I'm grateful to be asked to serve on the board, so I'll, I'll stick around a little bit. Um, I'm serving as co-chief of surgery with Dr. Sauter. So if you need anything, tr you know, track me down, and I'm always available to help. Uh, I remain you know, very optimistic for what we have on the horizon. I think LRH has become a great place to work, a great place to, uh, st you know, to seek care. And I think we as providers will continue to, uh, to honor that tradition to provide great patient care experiences. Um, so before I end, I'd like to just introduce Dr. Hulquist. If you if you could stand for those of you. Um. So one year from now, this will be your speech to give. So um, so thanks for coming, everyone, and um, enjoy the enjoy the rest of the time tonight. Good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. <clears throat> um, my name is Gail Clark. For those of you who may not know me, I have had the pleasure of working at LRH for um, a number of years and most recently served as the president of the um, LRH Auxiliary, uh, which I have thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and tonight I just want to report on the fundraising activities of the Auxiliary and um, the hospital, which is the fundraising committee. <clears throat> Um, I'm grateful for all the hard work the auxiliary has done um, and continues to do, and all of our auxiliary members. Everything that they do is on a volunteer basis. So I think that's pretty impressive. Um, this year alone, um, through purchases at the Moose Ledge gift shop, which is upstairs um, on the main level, um, and through the uh, special fundraising events that we host here at the hospital on a regular basis, the auxiliary raised $29,500. Um, and then they turned around, and when I say they, we as the board and the members turned around and um, put, gave 24000 back to the hospital. Um, $2,000 for a sponsorship for the North Country Women's Health Conference, the purchase of Born to Read books for North Country Primary Care Pediatrics, our young patients. Um, we were able to provide clothing um, in which we used to provide clothing to the emergency department only, but this year we were able to provide clothing to all of the departments so that when patients came into the hospital if they needed clothing to go home in they had it um, the auxiliary this is very impressive awarded nineteen thousand dollars in scholarships to area high school students and LRH staff who are either entering the healthcare field or um, extending their uh, health care education um, and lastly I'd ask Lori Morgan just to come up and give um, Bob Nutter a check. 
we, the LRH um, hosts or supports a caravan service for our patients so that they can get to and from the hospital um, at no charge. We spend over $100,000 on that service. And the, um, and the auxiliary gives us the largest sponsorship of $10,000. So uh, thank you all very much. And Lori, I'd like you to just give Bob a check. Thank you very much. Easy go. Easy go. <laughs> So these are, the, these are just a few examples. I, I would love to spend more time, but I don't have that. But on your chairs tonight, there is a packet. Um, and in that packet, I included an auxiliary membership application. Now, some of you may think that auxiliary are all women, but we're not. We're women and men. And we need members in order to be able to continue to do the things that we do to support the programs at Littleton Regional Healthcare. Uh, the membership is very modest. Um, there are several members here, and if you want to ask any of us tonight a little bit more about it, we'd be happy to tell you. Um, but I would encourage you to consider becoming a member. Um, you may not you may not get asked to do anything more than attend an event, make cookies, help with a special sale, or just be a member and be an advocate for us. So I, I hope that you will consider this. Um, I do, at this time, I would ask that members of the auxiliary who are here tonight, please stand up so that everyone can see. So thank you all very much. So now I'll just go on to report briefly about what the um, LRH Fundraising Committee um, and the uh, Development, Marketing, and Community Relations um, Department at LRH is doing to raise funds for Littleton Regional Healthcare. 2018 was a quiet year. We did not have a specific capital campaign, but that did not stop us from raising um, $183,000, which was generously donated by 300 individuals and businesses. And because of your generous support, we were able to um, make contributions to the following programs and services at Littleton Regional Healthcare. We provided funds for the volunteer program through uh, um, an endowment fund that we received a number of years ago, um, and that continues because we just, we, we only use the interest from the fund and leave the uh, principal alone so that it will continue to grow. Um, we support the Helping Hands Fund, and that fund is to help um, staff at LRH who may be facing a financial crisis. Um, and that was something that was established by a former employee. We supported the birth and parenting program. Every time someone gives birth at LRH, they go home with a swaddle for their newborn um, and a calendar. Uh, we, we also provided health-related education materials for the Gale Medical Library. Um, we continue to receive donations for the Nursing Education Scholarship Fund, um, and we're able to provide scholarships to our staff who are in the nursing or clinical field. Um, one of our donors, um, New England Wire, provided funds to uh, renovate the North Country Primary Care Waiting Area, the Pediatrics Waiting Area, and we haven't unveiled that yet, but we will soon, um, and we thank them very much. Uh, LRH Oncology, Hematology, and Infusion Center, they were allowed to provide furnishings for patients to improve comfort during their treatment. Um, again, this was an endowment fund that was um, established by Paul J. McGoldrick um, upon his passing, and any interest from that fund is specifically to be used for the oncology uh, center. And we provided patient financial assistance through, uh, through uncompensated care for uh, patients who may have asked for that. 
and lastly, LRH rehabilitation services equipment. So your gift, no matter what the size, makes a difference to our patients and the LRH family. At this time, I would ask members of the LRH fundraising committee to stand up and be recognized for their support. And I would also like to mention that Ashley Garrison, if you'd stand up, Ashley, she's a LRH board member, is now ser serving as um, committee chair. And lastly, I would like to extend a special thanks to Caitlin Murray. Her hard work um, on everything we do to support fundraising, marketing, and community relations is greatly appreciated. So thank you, Caitlin. And I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Edward Duffy. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, it's good to be back with you again. Uh, it's a familiar spot for me. This is my 27th one of these. We are at the 112th, though, of uh, LRH as, uh, as an entity. Um, it's been a very successful organization. Uh, and at, at no time more successful than it is right now, both, both as operations and clinically and financially. Um, but it's primarily thought of by all of us in the, in the community as being successful because it's a good hospital. But I'm going to bring you some perspective from the North Country. You're all in the North Country, I realize, but the North Country writ large and about rural health care writ large. These hospitals are an important economic engine and an important piece of the fabric of each, each of the community, not just for the health care they deliver, but for the economic benefit that they supply. Do you know, Littleton in and of itself, Littleton Regional Healthcare is the largest employer in Upper Grafton County. LRH is the, uh, uh, NCH is the largest employer in Coos and Grafton by far. For every one person that these hospitals employ, another two job, jobs are created in the community. For every one dollar we spend, $2.70 uh, $2 is spent elsewhere in the community. So I would suggest that not only do they provide a good quality of life for us because of the health care they deliver, but they're an essential part of the economic engine, the economic fabric, and the thing that will keep us vibrant. Now here in Upper Grafton, you don't have too much problems with growth. It's nice. It grows a little bit. It's growing steady. And there's a lot of exciting things happening here. And this hospital here is a big part of that. So I would like to just think we should all reflect on how important they, the, the hospitals are for that reason. You know, Jeff comes up and he talks about all the wonderful finances, and Roger is, is, is about to lead a fantastic organization, and Gail with all the, all the, the fundraising and the little things they do uh, every day. That's all well and good. And, and uh, Jeff was talking about the community benefit of $2.5 million. Not even mentioned in there is $2 million a year spent on OB services. The hospital loses that money every year. And Androscoggin Valley Hospital loses about $1 million every year on OB services. If you want a vibrant and growing economy, you have to have that. You have to have pediatrics and OB, and you have to have good medical care. And I would suggest, now that we're confronted maybe sometimes out in the community with alternatives to care, and people from away coming in with for-profit enterprises, that you be careful, and we all be careful, about how it damages these very important economic engines. Congratulations to everybody at LRH. Another terrific year. To Bob, fantastic job. Thanks all, and uh, have a wonderful evening. See you all later. Well, that's a hard act to follow. Uh, all these people saying very nice things out here. Um, my name is Bob Nutter. I'm the, uh, fortunate to serve as your president of this hospital, and uh, it's been uh, I've been here two years now, and it's been a great it's been a great couple of years. 
before I get into any of my opening remarks, I'm, I'm representing our senior management team. I think I'm blessed to have the greatest senior management team I could ever ask for here. And I'd ask them to please stand up so I could recognize them. Leslie. <laughs> Leslie Walker. Karen Superci. Gail Clark. Jared Stern. And I feel like I'm missing, oh yeah, Dr. Duffy, who still helps us out an awful lot, even though he has assumed the responsibility as the interim CEO for North Country Healthcare. So thanks to the team, uh, this makes it fun. It makes, it's a lot of hard work, and we have gone through an awful lot of changes. And I'm gonna walk us through some of those things, maybe some things that you may not have completely seen in some of the presentation we've seen so far. So. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we kind of put a tagline on something. You know, we like to kind of think, think about ourselves and these things kind of roll off the tongue pretty easily as well. You know, this is your hospital. This is the community's hospital. It's dynamic, it's strong, and we are growing every day. And I'm gonna go into some of those things as we, as we talk about. So we've got a great senior team, we've got great management, we've got great doctors, and we also have a great board. I see Bill Bedore in the back. I think uh, uh, he was recognized earlier, but I do, I do want to recognize Bill because he's been a tremendous support in his last two years as the chairman of this board, and certainly three years, I've just been corrected, so he's really good at correcting me uh, in the last few years. So I really ap appreciate all the support that Bill and the whole board actually provides to me as well. So this, this is kind of our, our, how our thought is on this. I'm used to walking around. I'm going to try to stay planted uh, as, I, as I go through these, these slides. Um, you've heard some of this, but I'm going to package it a little bit differently for you. So the utilization, hospital services, so the utilization of our community for our services has significantly rebounded in the last couple of years. Um, so we had an independent review done by a company called Quorum Health Resources, QHR. They actually are the ones that came in here and I've stolen, lifted these, these comments from their slides as they actually did an analysis, a detailed analysis of this hospital. So that's where I stole these from. Admissions and observations, uh, the volume is up over 25%. That's forcing us to regularly bump into our 25 bed limit. Most of you know as a critical access hospital we're restricted to having just 25 beds. So one of the roles that Corinne and her team have to do on a very regular basis is to manage that census, as we call it, number of patients in, in our beds. And it's difficult because we are literally out of space uh, three, four, sometimes five days a week. We've gone stretches where our nurses and our techs and our doctors are working their tails off because we have more patients in beds than we actually really have room for if you include the emergency department as well. So this is a great problem for us to have. It's a great problem for us to solve and we've got, we've got efforts underway to do exactly that. Um, outpatient operating room and emergency department volumes outpacing prior, prior years. So our volumes continue to grow in all those very critical areas for us. The balance sheet, so that talks about the health of our organization. The balance sheet at Littleton Regional Hospital is the healthiest, it's the strongest that it has ever been. So that's a tremendous thing. I'd like to take full credit for that, and I'd like my full team to take full credit for that, but I think the economy and the stock market might have helped a little bit. Just don't look at your portfolios in the last quarter here, it's been a little rough. but. Uh, anyway, we're still sitting in the healthiest level. So that gives us the resources, the cash, in order to keep reinvesting into this community for additional services and programs that we need to keep this place vibrant, as, as Ed was talking about. Uh, we also went through a pricing study here where we, uh, we, we studied what our costs were compared to what the costs were in the market for a variety of different services out there. In some cases, we found our prices were too high. In some cases, we found our prices may have been under what other hospitals are receiving for those same things. And so we adjusted those prices. One of the big things that we did, and uh, we spoke about this briefly last year, fully realized it this year, was the price of our orthopedic implants 
uh, we were able to reduce the cost of those implants for our patients. It's a pass-through expense, so we can get a, a cheaper price on that exact same part by tough negotiations with the, with the people that provide those parts to us. We can reduce the overall cost of the orthopedic surgery to you, the consumer. So we were very successful at doing that. We made a big change in the cost of the implants, and we passed that savings right along to our, to our patients. So it was really great to be able to do that. We will have time for questions at the end of this, and I'll ask Roger to come back up and invite him up here, and we can answer any questions you have at the end. Uh, under, a, under our quality heading on here, uh, this is really important to know because not all hospitals out there, certainly in rural America, can actually make the claims we're about to make to you. But it's really important that you all know that we're fully staffed in our emergency department with board certified emergency room physicians. So that's the highest level of doctor you can get in our emergency department. So you can rest assured when you come in for treatment and you need to be seen in the emergency department, you're going to be seen by a top-notch uh, emergency room physician. A lot of credit goes to Dr. Duffy on that. That's one of the other roles that he's been serving here too, is to help make sure that we improve the quality of our physicians and providers within our organization. He's done a tremendous job with that. Uh, we're fully staffed within our hospitalist program as well. So hospitalists are those doctors that care for you when you're in the hospital. So if you're in an inpatient bed, you'll be rounded on by a physician and an advanced practice practitioner as well. Uh, those are all board certified doctors that we have in those roles as well. Um, it's really important to say one of the things that we did was to eliminate locums. So locums are temporary doctors that you call when you have to have, um, uh, if you have a staffing shortage or you have a hole in your schedule, you call an agency and they'll send you in a doctor. Well, frequently we don't know how good that doctor is. Um, and so what we try to do is to say, well, what happens if we got rid of the expensive locums doctors in our key service areas here and actually paid a little bit more and hired uh, higher quality physicians full time year round? And that's really what the effort has been. And it's really helped us fill those open positions that we had in there for a number of years. We also brought in our own security officers here. So uh, I have to thank Chief Smith for this. There he is. Thank you, Chief. Uh, when I first started here two years ago, we had a couple of conversations. We had a lot of issues. Uh, LPD was here frequently. Uh, frequently is an understatement. Um, maybe they were here uh, four or five times, sometimes 10 times a day. Uh, and uh, we had to do something different about that. So we took a decision, we made a decision took the strategic effort to bring in our own security team. Uh, most of our security officers that are here now are uh, either former, retired, uh, military, or uh, law enforcement. So these are great people, and I like, actually like to call them ambassadors, because frequently you won't see them like patrolling the hallway or standing guard over something that, that could go wrong. They're out there pushing wheelchairs. They're out helping patients to their car or back from the car. So I really look at that role much more as an ambassador of goodwill than I do as a traffic cop that's just trying to keep, keep the peace within the hospital. But we've seen a big reduction in the number of calls for support from Littleton PD, and uh, I think it's helpful to them, and certainly is helpful to us, too, to have rapid response when we need it here for some of our behavioral patients that we have. We also have. Uh, um, Re rebooted our gastro program here. So Bob Simmis, we were fortunate to recruit a, a, a gastroenterologist here. He's been on the job now for, uh, I think, probably six months. Help me out on that one. I think about six months. And he's doing a tremendous job here as well. So we're grateful to have him on board as our full-time GI guy. Uh, under growth, uh, we have done a lot of growing in the last year or two. And uh, I'm going to go into some of those things uh, with you. So uh, we were very fortunate to open up our own retail pharmacy. So the board supported an effort to improve quality by seeing is there a better way to actually care for our patients. So uh, a personal story, uh, bringing a son to an emergency department, uh, which ended up into a, 
uh, surgical situation, and then on the way home uh, was unable to keep his crackers and peanut butter that I think nursing likes to give them to see if they can hold it down. Here's a news flash, they can't hold it down for a long time. <laughs> so my car got redecorated in the back and um, unfortunately kind of put that thought in my head like there must be a better mousetrap out here. And so we, we embarked on a process to say what if we opened our own pharmacy? What if we found a way to collaborate with ACHS, which is a FQHC, Federal Qualified Health Center, in this market to maybe rethink how we, we actually provide pharmaceutical care for, for our patients. And uh, we opened this in July of 2018, uh, and the fortunate thing was we were able to take Amanusix Pharmacy and staff and actually bring them into our family as well. So that was a, that was a great success. The real effort under this is a program that you'll find nationally recognized as meds to beds. So this is where if you're an inpatient or whether you're in any of our uh, outpatient uh, surgical practice or somewhere and the doctor writes a prescription for you, uh, we can actually and we will be going to your bedside in the future going over your med list to see what you're on and then actually providing medications right there at the bedside. So you won't have to stop on your way home uh, to get your first prescriptions filled. If you want to, you always will have that choice. But I think for the same price uh, with a better value, we're really trying to get patients to be more compliant with what their doctors have ordered. So if they want you to be on a certain medication, there's a reason for that because they believe it's the best thing for you in order to get healthier quicker. But we know a lot of patients don't because maybe they'll wait till tomorrow to fill the medication or it might be six degrees below zero outside and they're just not going to go out there uh, in this kind of weather to, to find, uh, find a pharmacy that's open. So these are the things that we're working on. And I think that's something that will pay some significant dividends when, when we uh, actually get that fully launched. We're piloting it right now. We're very pleased with how that is, is rolling out and we ant anticipate a, a full uh, release on this uh, soon. Uh, the other thing that we spent a lot of time on this past year is expanding our orthopedic service line. So Alpine Orthopedics has grown in several areas. Uh, we were very fortunate to recruit in Dr. Langevin. Uh, he's a traumatologist. So a traumatologist is one of those uh, doctors that come into your, a patient comes into your emergency department that has, uh, you know, really bad fractures or really bad significant problems. Uh, Dr. Langevin is the type of doctor that can fix that. We don't have to send them to Concord. We don't have to send them down to Dartmouth. We can care for those patients here. We have the staff. We have the training. We have the equipment. And we've got the expert physician that can help us do that stuff. We're very fortunate to have him here. We're now actually accepting patients from other hospitals throughout the, within this region who transfer their trauma patients to us to care for. So this is really a big deal for us to have this level of surgeon here within, uh, within our walls at Littleton. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. In June, we opened up a comprehensive pain program. So we're very fortunate to have recruited in a couple of great anesthesia providers that have an alternative to just a, a high opiate prescribing uh, medications that uh, a lot of folks get, find themselves addicted to either medications and so forth. So what we're looking for is providers that could come in here and help wean people off from high dose opiates down to other, uh, to a lower dose or an alternative medication way to handle this. So we're fortunate that we were able to bring in a couple of, couple of gentlemen. They're doing a terrific job. There are patients that write to us uh, that, that talk about how I've had this nagging pain in my shoulder, haven't been able to get rid of it. I went to see Frank or Greg, one of our two providers in there, and they were able to actually uh, calm the, my pain down. That's really what we're trying to do, and alter, alternative ways to just uh, opiate medications. There's importance and in, in, uh, judicial use of opiates that we'll always have to do in healthcare, but to find alternatives is really what we were looking for. Um, sports medicine, we were fortunate also to uh, attract Dr. Glazier, uh, who is a sports medicine uh, doctor. Uh, he's the new anchor for our brand new center that we opened up in uh, North Conway. 
So uh, if you haven't had a chance to drive by there lately, I would ask you to, next time you're in, if you have any interest at all, feel free to stop in. The staff there would love to give you a tour. I'd have to tell you they're very busy already. I was talking to Dr. Glazier last Friday, and he was talking about how busy that they currently are in that practice. So that's a really good problem for us to have as well. We do rotate other doctors through some of our specialists. So Dr. Chen goes through there. Um, uh, Dr. Kaufman goes through there. Uh, I'm trying to think who else is rotating. Dr. O'Neill, thank you, is going through there as well. So, so that's a couple of our growth areas that we have. Under strategy, so with all the stuff that we've been talking about, with all the growth that we've been looking at, with all the businesses that are coming into Littleton, and, and you just have to listen to the economic development folks, uh, professionals within the town, to realize Littleton is starting to really grow. It's booming. Um, and because of that, we have to be prepared too as a, as a healthcare organization, as a hospital, to meet the needs not just of today, but of the future. So let's say there's another 50 or another 100 uh, major brands that come to this community over the next five or 10 years. How are we going to serve that community? How are we going to meet the needs of that growing population? Dr. Duffy spoke a little bit about um, uh, OB uh, and pediatrics and the importance of, of having robust services here to care for a younger family. Um, and that's important for economic development as well. So we're going to continue to look at that. We're going to continue to grow uh, in those areas. Uh, so to that end, we've actually hired a consultant, uh, started working with us about a month ago, uh, and we'll be complete with that uh, engagement in about three, week, uh, three months from now. And what we're doing is studying our market positions, studying our data, uh, what the demands are, not of today, not what we can see, but the demands in the horizon. What are those relationships going to do? What would more people into this market do? Because we're going to need lead time to build up, to hire in certain providers to help continue to care for this community. So we're working on those right now. We're going to make sure that we actually build a roadmap. Next year at this time, we'll be able to share that with the public. We should have it done. Whoops, I keep hitting this microphone. Uh, we should be able to have that done uh, probably by June time. So we're, we're really looking forward to that. And then uh, in preparing for today's meeting, we started to, to think about all the different services that this hospital offers to the community. I was actually amazed by this number. 50, or there's over 50 different clinical services that we offer to this community. You just simply don't find that in a hospital of our size or in rural America. A lot of that is, is packaged up, and in order to get these services, you've got to travel an hour or further south to get these services. So we have been working with Dartmouth and continue to partner with them for clinical pathways for our patients to go there if we can't serve them here, and so they come back for the post-surgical care, if, if that's what it comes down to. Um, but there's other things that we've been working with them on, and things like telehealth is one of those really important things that's really emerging on the national trend right now to say if people can't come here, if we can't recruit a full-time doctor in a subspecialty, maybe we can actually partner with a tertiary care hospital like a Dartmouth-Hitchcock who can then provide that either through the TV monitor system or maybe once or twice a month they can come up to this town to actually care for our patients here that would actually keep our patients from having to travel out of this community uh, to the southern part of the state, or mid, mid part of the state. So we're really excited about that. But when we're looking at all the different service lines, we said, well, you know what we ought to do? We ought to probably list them, and they should be in your folder as well in the annual report. This is what your hospital offers in this community. And there's probably a bunch of things that I've forgotten to put up here. But thanks to the team to helping me remind me of all the different things that we have on here. This is really amazing. The services that we offer to this community are really amazing. These are all exceptional doctors and providers and something we all should be very proud of with the folks that are here. So this is the current list today. My guess is next year there'll be other service lines that we'll be offering. And as we continue to grow, we need to make sure that we're actually putting that as part of an overall package so that it makes sense. 
Just because we can doesn't mean we should. So there will be services that people will want here, but maybe there's just not enough volume for us, us to ever be excellent at that. But if you were to say, where would you go for your hip or knee replacement? Why would you go anywhere other than Littleton? I, I, I'm just, you know, I know I'm the cheerleader in chief here too, but I have to tell you, we've got a great program, great doctors with uh, uh, Dr. MacArthur who, who does 375 or 400 hips a year. I mean, outstanding quality results that this guy provides, as well as the knees and the hips and the scopes and all the other things we do. It's really amazing. You don't have to go anywhere. You can have it done here, and our pricing is, is as competitive as anywhere else. <clears throat> so let me grab a water, and I'll get back to this. So the priorities that the board has asked uh, leadership here to work on for this fiscal year, um, for 2019, uh, first and foremost was uh, the urgent care. So an urgent care center has been on our list of, uh, of services to bring to, to the community uh, pretty much since I walked in the door. Uh, we have uh, relocated our urgent care center, I'm sorry, the, the uh, occupational health services, which will be combined with urgent care. They were part of our emergency department or just outside the emergency department. We've moved them literally across the hallway here. So outside of this conference room, there's a, there's a uh, space, office space right over there. It's already built out, already staffed, up and running. Uh, it is our intent to open that as an urgent care clinic as well. Uh, as soon as we uh, complete the uh, recruitment of, of our staff, that's going to fill that role. We expect that to be open end of February or in March, and uh, that will be a big service to this community. So we have heard folks talk a little bit about uh, uh, a competitor, an, uh, convenient MD, I think they're known as, uh, that's interested in coming to Littleton. Um, that is, uh, you know, as, Ed, as uh, Dr. Duffy spoke about, that does be become a bit of a problem to us because if a venture capital-based company were to come in here, it actually does take away volume from us. Our services will be integrated. We think we have a superior model for an urgent care. If a person comes in and it's more than just a little bit of uh, uh, gas, it's actually an MI that person's having, having, we'll be able to get them into the proper treatment immediately. The price is the same. It doesn't matter whether you go to an urgent care at Littleton or an urgent care with a for-profit company out there. The value proposition is the same. The quality pro proposition from a hospital-based service is superior. So we think we'll have a better product out here and it's something that we're, we're very pleased with being able to offer to the community. Uh, we're also very pleased to have been recognized by the governor uh, to, uh, to be asked to serve as one of the hubs for the substance use disorder program. So as, as I think has had a lot of media out there, we've, we've talked an awful lot about uh, this in different sessions that we've held with, with the public as well. Um, it is known as the doorway at LRH, and we're very pleased to have that up and running. Jared Stern is our executive in charge of that, and if there are questions when we get to the question part, uh, he'd be pleased to answer any of those questions as well. Um, we are looking at expanding telehealth. As I, as I mentioned, we have some clinical pathways already developed with Dartmouth. We're continuing to, to build on those uh, and expanding the telehealth services that they have offering as well. Um, we did, I spoke about uh, opening our new location in North Conway. Um, this is also a very big one. So we were able to recruit in Dr. Tony Salerni, uh, who's a minimally invasive neurospine surgeon. So uh, Tony is with us. He started last week. Uh, and we're very pleased to have him join our ranks uh, to be able to provide those services to our community here. Already we're, we're seeing a number of patients with chronic back pain that are seeing him uh, in clinic and already some of those patients are, are, are likely to end up having to move into a surgical intervention. We are not going to do the really big crazy spine surgeries here at least to start. <laughs> um, but we will, uh, we will be able to do kind of what I call the bread and butter spine programs, 
uh, and uh, and actually get some real relief for patients. So, if uh, if anyone's interested, Dr. Slarney is an outstanding um, surgeon in his field, and we're very fortunate to have grabbed him here. He'll be here Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, and um, uh, he'll also be rotating to some of our other outside remote clinics as well. Uh, and then behavioral health, <clears throat> this is a really big one. So. Um, this is another major issue that we have up here in the North Country and is something that we're, we're working really hard to try to fix. So for the first year that I was here, we, we tried really hard to recruit in uh, other psychiatrists to provide uh, a more robust service. And we, we had very limited success in doing that. The practitioners that we already are working with, the doctors and APPs, advanced practice practitioners, are, are excellent. They were working with us, they were working with Weeks, they were working with other facilities out there as well. What we've tried to do is to say, we're gonna put them all under one group, as a larger group, and then buy that back. So Weeks has offered to provide, uh, be the hub, if you will, and then provide that service back to us. As a sister facility, it should be seamless, it should be completely integrated, and that way it should work very comprehensively with all of our primary care providers. So we're, we're excited about this. Uh, we think it's, a, it's the right new beginning uh, for us with, with behavioral health and it's something that I think is critically needed in this area. We can always do better, we can always do more, uh, and we want to make sure that we're providing the best service possible. It is a little scary if you have a loved one in this market that needs behavioral help support, professional support urgently. Uh, it's very scary um, and it's something that we, we must find a solution to and I think we're on the right track to do that. All right, that ends that part of the presentation and I am thrilled to pre present this next piece to you. So we have recently uh, received an outstanding award, and that is the uh, Press Ganey. Do most, most folks know who Press Ganey is out there? They're kind of the survey people when it comes to patient satisfaction and how you doing, those types of people out there. So Press Ganey is known as the, uh, the leader in, in those satisfaction surveys when it comes to hospitals and so forth. They have a, a recognition program uh, that, uh, that identifies top performing hospitals throughout, uh, throughout the country. Uh, and it's top performing ho hospitals, is this the right, right, oops, I just screwed up, didn't I? There it goes. Um, I'm trying to find the laser pointer, there it is. Um, uh, so on, on patient experience. So the top performing patient experience hospitals out there, it's a nationally recognized symbol of superior achievement. Um, you just don't see this type of thing. Uh, in order to achieve this, you have to be in the top 5% of all hospitals in the country, in their book of business, when it comes to patient experience. Or another way to say that, we have to be in the 95th percentile or greater. And you have to sustain that for a minimum of four quarters. So that's 12 months of time. LRH is the only hospital, the only hospital in New Hampshire to have achieved this award. It's an amazing feat. Um, I'm very proud of the team here. Uh, and it, it does not, that's not my award. That's our great physicians that we have here. It's our great staff. It's a great leadership. It's a great board. That's what this is all about out here. So I'm very pleased with this. Do we wanna flip that up? The next thing we have is questions. So get those questions ready and I'll invite Roger back up here. So here's a banner that we're gonna be putting up here. This is similar to a Prescani Award. <laughs> Got my attention, you woke me up. Um, oh, that's terrible. I have to turn this off, don't I? There we go. You can see a little better, better now. So this is something we're very proud of. This is something that uh, you all should be very proud of with this hospital. This doesn't happen without the support of a great community, and we're very, very pleased with this. So with that, why don't I invite Roger back up here, and we're, we're happy to take, uh, take any questions that you all have. There's gotta be some questions. Yes, sir. 
Keith Batch, Alder Franconia. Um, thanks for uh, giving us all this information. Uh, I hear that you're looking forward in trying to figure out uh, what your new markets and audience might be, who's moving into town, all that kind of stuff. But could you, uh, do you have any insights into uh, what made your growth in, in the last two years? Uh, is it because more people came in walking off the street looking for hospital work, or what, what was it that drove it? Some insights into why your business went up. So uh, I, I think that uh, Littleton Regional Healthcare is a, uh, is a great secret. I, I don't think we've done a terrific job, and I take responsibility for this, in getting the word out of all those different services that we offer. So yes, we've expanded services. We brought in, uh, and fortunate to recruit in some new, new doctors, new providers to help us. Certainly the staff that helps to support that as well. But it goes back to what we have to do every three years, which is conduct a community needs assessment. To go out and ask the community, what are the services that you actually need or are needed in this community that you have to go a distance to get to. We also, since we've been working closely with Dartmouth Hitchcock, um, Dr. Duffy, Corinne, and I on a regular basis uh, meet with those folks. They have perfect information, they have perfect data of services that come out of the North Country and actually have to go to the southern part of the state. The truth of the matter is they're full. If anyone's been to Dartmouth lately, you realize, uh, as Corinne and I know too well from visiting down there recently, uh, it can take 45 minutes to drive around a parking lot just to find a space on the very top of the parking garage. It's tough. It's a tough place to, to try to find a place to park. Um, that said, uh, they need our help in order to retain more of those patients closer to home too. So their goal and our vision of providing great care close to home is really stuff that we've been working hard to do. So as we develop these things, as we push these things out, it comes down to our doctors referring in network within North Country Healthcare that they can refer if they don't have that service up in Berlin or at, in Lancaster at Weeks, and we offer it here, go ahead and refer that patient to us at Littleton and we'll care for them here and then we'll return them back to their community for those services. So we're gonna to continue to focus on that, continue to grow in those areas. Whenever we can, we're gonna to try to care for our community as close to home as we possibly can. Much? I think, I think we're trying to see, as we look at the number of services we do provide, folks begin to understand they have a beautiful and effective and a quality-based healthcare system right here in the North Country. So when they talk to one another, and all of a sudden they realize, as we've reviewed some of the letters that come in, about how excellent of, of a care they received here, word of mouth gets, gets around. Um, our marketing, as you see, we've done the last couple of years. We are a facility that can compete with the tertiary hospitals as it relates to health care. So I truly believe that the growth has been through the tourism, through our own normal families that realize they don't have to drive south to get the health care that they can have right here. Great. You know, a very specific example to that could be uh, with the hiring of our traumatologist. Before, all of those cases would have to go to the southern part of the state. Um, so he might only be doing 15 or 20 cases, surgical cases, a month, which isn't a whole lot for an orthopedic surgeon, uh, but those cases otherwise would have gone to the southern part of the state from patients that live up in this part. So those are things that we're going to continue to, to focus on. Great question. Thank you. Other questions? Don't be bashful. So, uh, Bob, where did you see the... Uh Yeah, so it's literally outside of this door. If you took a right, there's a clinic space right there. It's the, the sign on the door currently says occupational health. There's probably a big sign out front that says future home of the uh, urgent care clinic uh, or coming soon or something like that. So uh, that's that should be right outside the door. We're happy to walk anyone through that too if you'd like. And what are the expected hours? We're looking at uh, eight to eight, uh, seven days a week. Pardon me? Do you know what the charge is going to be? The charge? The door? 
Yeah, so the charge of an urgent care is literally the same whether you come to our urgent care or any other urgent care. So the payers, like the big commercial payers, kind of have a fixed rate. This is all they're going to pay for certain services through urgent care. It'll be a lot less than it is in the emergency department and probably just slightly more than what it would cost to go to your primary care doctor. We really want people, if you've got a primary care doctor, to see your primary care. That's, that's the best place to receive care because they know you. The superior model that we're offering is if you are part of our family already or partnered with ACHS or one of the others, uh, as you come into our services, we should be able to pull up your same electronic medical record that Dr. Duffy spoke about earlier and we should be able to access your prior histories as well. We're not here to to solve your other medical issues in an urgent care. We're only here to serve the, the episodic issue, the, the issue that brought you in today, whether it's on a, on a Friday night after you know, nine o'clock and you discover you probably have a UTI and you need to be seen by someone, it's a long wait till Monday morning to see your primary care doctor. You can come in, see us, and we're happy to run the quick tests on you and then get you on your way. Yes? Healthcare and what, what impact that has on you and what you see as the future there? Sure. Um, and Rog will jump in here too, I'm sure. So, uh, we, are, we as a North Country Healthcare group, so that's four hospitals and a home health agency that is part of that, have been together now for about two and a half years, is that right? Heading on three years at this point. Um, and we're still working through kind of the growing pains of. How do you transfer patients within the system? We have separate electronic me medical records currently, so it's not as smooth as, we, as it will be in the future. Today, it's, it's we're still the phone call and we'll transfer them down to you and then we'll get those medical records to us. So it's not as smooth as it, as it could be clinically. That's our most important function is, how do we improve quality and clinical? What we've done a superior job with is back of the house functions, the transactional functions, things like HR policies, consolidating benefits, consolidating revenue cycle um, to try to make sure that we can get a bill that's same look and same feel everywhere we go. So those are things that I don't want to call that easy because the people in the room that have been involved with that would, would not be happy with me if I said that was easy. But I would tell you that's easier than some of the clinical integration that's that's before us, and, and Dr. Duffy will be leading us through. Yes? Well, uh, you spoke proudly, correctly so, of a rebound in utilization of services, and you had a study done of the volume in the hospital. And you said, and I'm quoting here, we're literally out of space three, four, five days a week. Yes. And in some cases, quote, we have more patients in beds than we have room for acute food and emergency. Now, LRH is a critical access hospital, which limits the number of beds you have in my time. Has the discussion over volume considered whether that critical access hospital status may in the future become an impediment to growth? Wow, that is a good question. <laughs> so uh, the, the short answer is I don't know today. Um, we are, we've embarked on a study of that because we're trying to marry up what the, commu the future community will need. So 10 years out, we're, we're trying to look at a 10 year time horizon and make sure that we are ready for whatever comes down that way. So uh, partnering with uh, the city, partnering with uh, um, Dartmouth and others to get better data of the services we need here will help us answer that question. Having a critical access hospital status it results in millions of dollars to our bottom line today. So we would have to get to a critical level of additional volume in order for us to actually ever give up that critical access bed count status that's limited to 25. There are other ways, there are other things that we can work on and will work on uh, if there's needs for this community. And we, we believe that at, over time, at some point down the road, that question has to be answered probably sooner rather than later. Yeah, Raj, do you want to add to that? I think to add to that, one of the one of the points that uh, Bob brought up earlier, where, where we're looking, uh, we've got this outside firm coming in. They will help us um, look 
to the future relative to capacity, to growth, to the dynamics of what the healthcare system is going to be like in the future, uh, how we're going to pay for and be competitive with tertiary hospitals. So all of that has got to be part of what this board does in its strategic vision to the future. And if we don't look that way, then we'll be obsolete or be cost prohibitive. I want to add one other point. Those of us that are part of other businesses, we're being challenged by our insurance companies to be cost competitive. Uh, some of the companies, some of the insurance companies are already asking our employees to drive south because their rates are better. And we have to find a way, we must find a way to be competitive in pricing and keep our patients here uh, so that we already know they can get the best health care competitively here as well as down south. And we want their convenience to stay here. Any other questions? We're just about at time right now, um, but uh, we'd invite you to, I don't think I have that up here next. We do. You can't read it now because we have the other sign up there, but uh, in our conference rooms one, two, and three, which is right next door to our left, uh, please go and enjoy uh, a, a wonderful uh, spread that our food service here has put on like they do every single year. It's really amazing the work that they do. So. Help, help say thanks to them by enjoying that, enjoying that meal. We'll all be around. If you have any questions at all, feel free to grab us on the way. Thank you very much for coming out on a very cold night. Uh, very pleased with the turnout, especially considering the conditions outside. So have a great night. Thank you very much.